welcome to DABCC Radio, where smart people listen. Virtualization and Cloud Talk, featuring cutting edge solutions from the hottest companies around the globe. Broadcasting from the DABCC offices in sunny Sarasota, Florida. Surrounded by computers, books, and Legos. A Microsoft MVP, Citrix Charter CTP, VMware VExpert. And your host, Douglas Brown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of DABCC Radio. We are really excited to to have Jetta Ayers with us today. Jetta is the CEO over at IGEL, where I work, and just an all-around great guy, a true leader and somebody you want to follow, somebody you want to do things for at the best of your ability, and it's just a great guy. So I'm really happy to have him on the line today because he's going to share with us what's going on at IGEL. You guys have probably all heard of us and then some really made a huge splash over the past three years. And uh, Jed's going to talk a bit about that, but also about this changing world that we find ourselves in with COVID-19 and, and uh, you know, how that has affected IGEO, how that's affected the world, how it's affected the EUC space and things of that nature. So with no further ado, let's, let's just dive into this interview. I'm very excited again to have Jed Ayers, the CEO of IGEO Technology. Okay, Jed, let's get going. Um, first of all, I'm so happy to have you back on the line with us. It's been a while since we've had you on, so thank you so much for taking the time. Well, happy to be here, Doug. Always a fun time to talk to you. The joy is all mine, Jed. The joy is all mine. So that being said, for those who might not know you, who are you and what do you do over at this great thing we call IGEL Technologies? Uh, well, uh, I'm uh, one of the uh, 450 employees at IGEL, and i uh, um, most recently took the role from uh, where I was running North America and uh, acting as the global CMO to the CEO globally for IGEL. So um, we did that transition in February. And uh, of course, a few weeks later, the entire world went upside down. So great time to uh, test your chops as a, as a newly minted CEO uh, in the midst of a hundred, once in a hundred year crisis. Wow, that's that's not that's crazy. That's not any fun. Uh, I guess that's what they call trial by fire. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the challenging thing for me is two thirds of our employees are in Europe, right? And part of my promise to them from the stage in Munich uh, in February six or eight, whatever day it was, we had our kickoff was I'll be back. You know, uh, see you soon. <laughs> and of course, um, that hasn't been possible. So uh, obviously, we've adjusted to a whole new. Uh, paradigm of uh, Zoom calls and telephone calls and FaceTime and emails and every other kind of way we can try to stay in touch with each other. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. And, you know, Jed, you always joke that you have more airline miles than any, anyone else. You're, you're constantly flying somewhere. And uh, so this has definitely changed how you do business in your life in general. But um, I must ask, how do you feel this has affected IGEL in general? Well, I mean, I think uh, obviously just like every other company, it was a shock, right, to the system in terms of the hypermobile sort of connected way that we would interoperate with our customers and our partners. You know, I think, you know, on any given day in the United States, we probably had, you know, half the people on a plane going somewhere. Uh, so, you know, to suddenly have that grounded overnight was a shock, right? I just went to the San Francisco office. Uh, yesterday night and it's kind of like a time capsule right like two months ago two plus months ago people left uh, to go home and you know they thought they were going to come back the next day right and you know no they they did it so um, you know I think the company has adjusted very well though right we were obviously uh, a company that sells uh, technology that allows you to, to work from home albeit you know most of our German uh, population you know, uh, had, had it work from home, including the developing team, right? There was uh, very few of them that worked from home. Um, and so, yeah, I'm very proud that, you know, very, in a very short, in literally 48 hours, we moved um, all of that team of over 100 people uh, to home offices. And um, we leveraged, obviously, our own technology, the UD Pocket, to make that possible. And uh, the Cloud Gateway and 
Yeah, I mean, I guess just like every other organization in the world, uh, it, you know, we had to quickly find out how uh, agile you actually are. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy to say other than our production team, it's in the factory in Bremen in Northern Germany, everybody is, uh, is working from home very successfully. It's really great. Really great. It's definitely, it's been a shock. Uh, for me, my life hasn't changed much at all other than I'm not on airplanes, right? I'm, I'm not getting in front of folks, but, uh, you know, I've always worked from home. So, uh, uh, but I know it is, a, it's a lot different for a lot of people, you know, it's it's different, just a whole different world. But uh, that yeah. being said, uh, th- that being said, you know, well, I want to dive into IJAW itself and, you know, the what we are and, and what have you. Um, what benefits would you say IGEL brings to a wor- you know this new world, right, for, of work from home? Well, I mean, if you go back in the history of IGEL for 20 you know, years, uh, we've been working um, to deliver on this sort of promise of any application, any desktop to any device, right, um, with the leaders of the space, initially Citrix and Microsoft and obviously VMware and now Amazon. Uh, as the primary players there, right? But the idea is, you know, working with, with those uh, partners to deliver a high fidelity, secure, easy to manage solution and be able to do it on any x86 device, right? And that's been the the sort of promise for a, 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 you know, a long time. So clearly it's almost like a perfect storm in terms of, you know, one of the most you know, interesting use cases is work from home, right? Uh, albeit we you know, have lots of other use cases, call centers and hospitals and manufacturing floors, but clearly one of the interesting use cases was work from home. And so this has been a perfect storm in terms of breaking through a lot of inertia uh, for every role to have to have that, uh, you know, sort of a high fidelity experience in their home. home. Um, and so, yeah, I think we've seen um, new use cases, right? Where you know, back office functions in finance and, in you know, and call centers where there was, you know, sort of, you know, we, we had certain customers that never would have thought to send 5,000 people in a call center uh, for an insurance company to their home office, right? These are entry level jobs. I need to be able to see those people, right? Suddenly overnight, that wasn't an option. And so, yeah, what's crazy, Doug, is that in many cases we've seen, uh, the, the measurements for these functions actually move to up into the right, you know, faster response times, better customer service, yeah. more tickets being serviced. And then you look at that, right. Um, and you're like, okay, wait, the company is benefiting. The planet is benefiting. The co- the customer is benefiting. Like, uh, you know, why didn't we do this sooner? Right. And I think that's sort of, that's the recalibration that's going to happen over the, the, the coming months, right? As people really understand that, hey, this is a viable architecture. And, uh, and I, I don't think you're going to see people running back to the old, you know, office building with 7,000 people packed into it. Yeah. Just don't see it. Yeah, you know, this is a very good point. Like I said, I've always worked from home. And one of the great things about working from home is I don't have a lot of distractions. And, uh, you know, you talk about it. We started the way we work today was actually invented in the early 1900s, right? Because you went, woke up, you went to a factory, you dealt with day, daylight time, right? You needed to work during the day, uh, you know, many different things. But the world's changed a lot since then. And I read this great book years ago called Rework. And it talks about, you know, hey, let's think of you know there's a better way to work we can rethink work right and they talk about that book on my bookshelf right here actually i read that same book (laughs) it's it's a phenomenal book and they talk about the the invention of cubicles and even like my wife works from a uh, a big long desk or table where they has three other people sitting right next to her and what i feel is like it actually is counterproductive in some ways uh where when you're we're seeing the increase of productivity i think because they're isolated and they're in there sitting down and they're working and they're not talking to their buddies. Now that's sort of sad, but at the same time, it is a, it is a heck of a lot more productive. I mean, I think we're going to make, we're going to make a, a shift where you do still want that human interaction. There's, oh, of course. It's irreplaceable sort of the hallway conversations and the, the energy that you get from interacting with other humans. But I think um, it's going to be um, more calculated in terms of when and where and how those things are done. I, I always hold up the guy who is the, you know, one of the entrepreneurs of the moment right now, the uh, founder of, of Zoom. 
And if you read about, you know, his, his sort of eat your own dog food, if you will, he, he's a CEO of a company that I think last I looked was, you know, worth 47 billion in market cap, which is more than all seven of the leading hour lines put together now. And, you know, you look at one of his sort of tenets of how he runs his life, Zoom first. He literally uh, gets on a plane once or twice a year, right? So like wow. the times where he holds up, he holds a high bar for what can't be accomplished um, over, over Zoom, right? So I think that's the recalibration. Now, maybe he's taking it to an extreme, uh, but I think you're going to find, you know, okay, do we need such a big office space? They're energy hogs. People have to pay a lot of money to get there. They, they harm the planet on their way to these places. And to your point, oftentimes they're sitting at a desk where they have very little interaction with anyone else. Um, and then they go home and, and, you know, do the whole thing over again the next day. Right. And, you know, yeah, they're, this is rooted in the sort of factory model that said, I have to touch a piece of material you know, on a factory assembly line or whatever, right? These people are staring at a screen for the most part. Um, And so, yeah, there's a billion knowledge workers. And it's interesting, in December, Gartner published something that said, hey, this month, 2019, December, we, you know, some company in the world hired the billionth knowledge worker, right? And what's a knowledge worker by definition? Somebody who stares at a screen and, you know, moves materials, uh, uh, you know, uh, digital bits and bytes around, right? Um, they don't typically, you know, tangibly touch something. Um, and so to me, that's the, you know, that's the paradigm shift right now, Doug, is, you know, how many of those billion knowledge workers can reduce their carbon footprint um, dramatically um, and have a better life for themselves and their families as we shift this into this new world order? That's, you know, the next question I was going to ask is, what do you see the future work? You know, uh, will, you know, COVID-19 truly change things? And in many ways, I, I think you answered that. Is there anything else to add to that? I mean, I just think it's going to create a, a, a level of introspection um, around, you know, this concept that work is an outcome. It's not a place you go. It's an outcome, right? So the, the, when you think about talent and um, hiring people, you know, and you have this sort of old thinking that says, well, they have to come to this office and they have to be in this zip code. And oftentimes you're paying a premium for that talent and the planet's paying a premium for getting them there. Um, I think that that sort of um, thinking and the inertia around that is just broken through this sort of you know, science experiment of the last two months, right? Where by uh, by law, we were forced into, the, into this uh you know, a situation where they, you know, had to figure out how to do it. And in many cases, like the example I gave earlier, the, the results actually got better. So I think it's just going to be too tantalizing in terms of the acquisition of talent and the reduction of costs. Uh, when you think about how much money is spent in real estate, it's a huge cost uh, to put people into these buildings. I just, I think it's, it's going to, it's not going to uh, go all work from home, but it's going to, it's going to have, you're going to have a lot more people that have access to that. And especially in Europe where six out of 10 people had never even had the chance to work from home. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. So, you know, like you said, we will get back to work at some point, you know, in a more traditional way. So some people will, some people won't, you know, some companies will do 50, 50 or what have you. Right. You know, so as companies sort of retool to work from home, uh, and maybe hopefully with the IGEL solution, do you see the same benefits that we provide from the work for home then providing that same benefit to the corporations when we go back to work? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, obviously I think IGEL's value proposition is, is uh, just as strong inside the network of the corporate firewall as it is outside, right? And you know, one of the things that's driving that for us today is this beautiful piece of technology we introduced four years ago, the iGel Cloud Gateway, right? Um, that product is you know, flying off the shelves and is, is part of this uh, work from home kit that we put together um, that, that, that sort of says, hey, um, you know, everybody's gonna, everyone that gets hired, I think in the future, uh, if, if they aren't hired exclusively to work from home, they're gonna have a, a, a sort of desk that they're um, assigned to, uh, you know, to, to work from 
And then they're going to have the ability to flex off of that desk in a building into um, their home, right? And, and you're going to have to have the same security, the same manageability, and the same performance um, of all your all, and access to all your apps, data, and desktops as, as you would basically anywhere, right? And so iGel really does help uh, deliver on that sort of frictionless pivot from from an office to a coffee shop to your house. Perfect, perfect. Um, maybe you can share some success stories around what, what iGel's been able to provide for the work from home world. Yeah, well, I mean, I think business continuity is top of mind, right? So just helping a lot of companies um, you know, move into, into this work from home. So um, we, we've been on the front lines of, of, of moving call centers and moving um, you know, back office functions, like I mentioned. But we've also been on the front lines as, you know, some, pe- some people in the UK and the US, they're building entire new hospitals overnight, right? And so outfitting those uh, and quickly equipping them. Uh, we've just seen a lot of use of the UD Pocket, right? Where it was very hard to get hardware uh, for a while, right? People were buying out every kind of uh, laptop and desktop that was on the market. So, okay, what do you do then? You go look in the you know, closet and find anything you can, right? So I think iGel came to the rescue of a lot of organizations that um, you know, uh, s- suddenly realized, whoa, I can put this old hardware to use. Um, so I like to say, you know, uh, our, our whole mantra was this servant heart of helping the, the people that are helping the people, right? That, that we're getting sick with this. And so, yeah, um, our biggest vertical is healthcare. So, um, yeah, we saw a lot of uh, opportunity um, to help them as they built out, you know, new wings of hospitals or retooled them over, you know, very quickly over a, a couple week period. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think the whole world had to sort of re reimagine, um, you know, what they were doing, and iGel, you know, plays a big part of that. I'm sure you've seen the. Uh, the result earning results from uh, from Citrix and VMware um, and Microsoft and Zoom they all had great first quarters. iGel was not an exception to that, right? We saw a lot of people needing our technology as they were um, trying to figure out how to deal with this. You got it. You got it. It's a great solution. Um, absolutely. I always describe iGel sort of the Citrix solution, but for the operating system, right? Citrix gives us anywhere, any place, any device applications, but you need that for the OS also. And that's yeah. what iGel brings anywhere, any place, any device operating system. One other thing we've seen, Doug, and I don't know if you've seen it in your inbox, but um, the bad guys, when you have this many people, you know, hundreds of millions of people suddenly working from home, um, yeah, you know, they 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 came to life, right? And so oh, yeah. the whole ransomware and phishing and all these different um, you know things that the bad people do um, have been magnified, right? And so one thing that we've also done, obviously, I can't say names, but obviously, you know, iGel comes to the rescue of a lot of people on a weekly basis that get hit with ransomware, um, and so resurfacing, you know, um, those devices that um, have been compromised with a Linux operating system that's, you know, hardened. Um, suddenly people find religion uh, on, on, on a hardened Linux operating system um, in that type of a situation. So we have seen quite a bit of that in the last six weeks. Um, and, and obviously the quickest way to resurface it is just put an IGEL OS on there or, you know, send, send them a thousand UD pockets. You got it. You got it. No, I 100% agree. Security is a huge thing, especially if you're using an existing work, you know, existing uh, employee's personal computer. Lord knows what's on that device, right? Just give them a UD pocket, plug the thing in, boom, they're in their corporate environment as if they were sitting in front of their desk at the office. Nothing changes for them, right? They unplug the thing and they're back to work. I mean, it's just such a beautiful device. It really, truly is. Yeah. So on the, that being said, as many companies think about longer term work from home and work remote scenarios in general, uh, do you have any share any uh, factors uh, that they should think about when planning for this type of environment in this type of world? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all uh, kind of lear- learning uh, from each other in terms of, you know, some of the uh, the things that are, uh, people are experiencing, right? Because it's not just technology, right? It's one one component of this is to get them 
to a place where they can have this high performance, secure, manageable solution. But then, you know, you have to deal with the mental part of it, right? And the sort of distractions and the the family and obviously in this situation the kids are at home um in a lot a lot of these scenarios so i think you know that's the the, the human aspect of how you schedule time and the mental fatigue of one day blurring into the next you know we've been um you know we we've bought a license for uh, an application that i've actually been surprised as we can see how uh how people are using it it's called headspace and you know this is just a, a, a nice app that helps people with meditation and tips and tricks on you know how to stay mentally healthy so i think that's uh, a challenge and obviously communication becomes a challenge when you have all these people at home um, i mean i think for me beyond the technology it's really about the human component of it right it's like how how do you stay connected with them how do you keep them motivated how do you keep them healthy obviously from this insidious virus but also you know mentally as they uh, as they, they try to stay motivated and um, calibrated on the mission that we're on. Great, great. I, I the next question I must ask you. I get it asked almost every time I have any sort of open forum, and that is, I gel on arm. You know, I gel on on Pi, Workspace Hub, casting. You know, what do you what do you say when someone asks you that? Well, I mean, I think there's, it's undeniable that that's where the world is going to go, right? Um, we're all interested in um, devices that use less power, consume less space and use less you know, material and putting them together, right? Like iGel, our whole vision is you know, creating a place where the world works with better outcomes for people, companies, and you know, the planet. It's you know, on equal footing there, right? So I, I do believe that um, that's where the world is going to go, right? Into, into this sort of smaller form factor, less power consumption, less price, right? And it's going to hopefully get mean more devices can get out there into the hands of, of people and they can create, you know, better, um, you know, solution, more innovative solutions too when you have, you know, that kind of power um, put in more places. So I, I'm a big believer in it. I think uh, the Raspberry Pi as it's evolved to its current, you know, state with Raspberry Pi 4, amazing right the things that you can do with that run two monitors and you know have a full desktop experience for a device that less you know that's less than a hundred dollars this is uh this is fast you know fascinating you know um, breadcrumb of where the world is going to go so i think you know the, i can't say much more uh than to tell you that igel is working very diligently with a number of different um technology partners out there to deliver the you know um on the promise of igel's operating system on those types of devices but true to the sort of german rigor and engineering you know um depth that we want to you know we want to put out a product that we can stand behind we don't just rush into the market right um and so i think that's about all i can say doug other than to stay tuned right igel has the best in class linux operating system for x86 we plan to have the best operating system for the ARM platforms out there in all their different you know, shapes and sizes. And so I think, you know, that's the future and, you know, we're going to be re ready and, you know, in the back half of the year, look for some announcements in this space. And yeah, I also, just to your point about the casting thing, obviously I, I love that technology too. I'm not sure exactly if with less people in the offices, um, you know, it, it's it's maybe not going to be used as heavily. But then on the other hand, you know, we don't want to touch things when we go into an office anymore, right? We want to have for super hygiene and you know, sort of automation that things just you know work, right? And the ability to do that from your phone or your laptop, I, I see this as something very uh, probably interesting. Actually, more from a a hygiene sanitation perspective, right? I was in our office in San Francisco yesterday and I'm like thinking about all the places people, you know, uh, touch that are common, right? That you would have to think about as, as we yeah. put people back into offices and certainly, you know, the, the, the workspace hub and casting, these are things that could be accelerated in this new world. Very interesting. I never thought about it that way. That's a very, very valid point. I love it. I love it. Um, so at iGel, we've given away a Tesla. 
We've given away a bunch of money. We've given away a Porsche. And now we have a contest for a complete home office makeover. Can you share a bit of information about this? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think one thing that the I, iGel's marketing team does is they pride themselves on trying to do things that are out of the box and creative. And um, I think all of us have probably, you know, fantasized about uh, how we would redo our office since we've been sitting in it for, I think this is my 70th day sitting in this chair. Should I get a more comfortable chair? What uh, should I be standing up? Should I have a desk facing the window? What, you know, what kind of lighting should I have on myself? And so I think, you know, one of the things IGEL did was they partnered with somebody who actually does this for a living, Vicki Norris. Um, and she, you know, she's, you know, hopefully adding a whole, whole bunch of value to the people that are tuned into the IGEL world about, you know, how to organize your office. And so, yeah, we have, obviously we have access to a lot of cool partners, Microsoft and LG that make really cool things. And, and obviously we know the types of th things people like already, fancy coffee makers and, you know, really nice chairs. So, um, yeah, we're, we're having some fun with it. And obviously it's an opportunity to have a conversation with customers. And if we can give away uh, some cool prizes once a quarter, and ultimately I think we're going to, you know, have a showcase, um, you know, re re remake of an office um, at the end of the year, right? Something that will... Um, rival kind of the home makeover tv shows it'll be something we can go in and um with some professionals actually completely redesign an office uh and and show the before and after that's great that's great no offense to vicky but i still think the it baller guy should pimp my office that would be <laughs> phenomenal yeah. bring those two in right exactly the as long as they drive up in a tesla yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay, so uh, for my next question, uh, this is a really good one. I think you'll love it. Uh, how do you configure a custom partition on De Dell Latitude 690 or maybe a HP ProLine 5500? Uh, well, the first thing I would say is uh, you're asking the CEO this question. Um, <laughs> it's pretty fun pretty technical there, Doug. Uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, you know, I love the custom partition because, you know, it sort of speaks to the modular uh, and sort of the Swiss army knife, you know, of, of this operating system. And, you know, there's very few things that we can't figure out with a script or, you know, a custom partition. Um, so, you know, I would tell you that the uh, custom partition is now included with the operating system. Uh, which is an important thing, right, um, for a lot of people because they had to buy it separately and pay for it before. So I love the fact that we've moved it into the core operating system. Um, so if you want to put a Chrome or Chromium browser uh, partition or whatever it is, you Zoom. On that Dell Latitude, you can do it. And yeah, exactly, Zoom. Um, so I, I guess, you know, obviously the first thing I, I, I would just say, just not just because I'm talking to you, is like go on the community, right? There's whatever, close to 4,000 people out there on the community that could probably give you all kinds of immediate uh, advice on how to do that, um, depending on what application you were trying to put in that custom partition. So uh, that's the best answer I can give you. Or 1-800-Matthias-Haas, our CTO. <laughs> well, don't forget, I much must call out, we have an amazing advanced services group too. And uh, these guys can uh, definitely help you if you have any. You know, this was a, a joke question I wanted to throw at Jed. You know, we're all serious. I've been talking about the new, new world and the great benefits IGEL brings. And then all of a sudden, wait a second. What's this customizing low level? So, oh, wait a second. But we have yeah, a great group uh, of folks that do that, don't we? Leave it to you to throw a curveball into this conversation. But I, obviously, yeah, we have. I mean, when you think about the technical talent that sits inside of IGEL from our inside SEs to our outside SEs to our advanced services team to our support team uh, to obviously the, the, uh, the whole team that sits in Augsburg, I think that's one of the magical things about IGEL is that this sort of um, – human component of this, um, you know, they're, they're all lined up to sort of help customers through this, right? And then, of course, you uh, put that all up against the backstop of a highly, um, you know, convicted channel community, right, of part reseller partners that work with IGEL, our Platinum and Gold, um, SI, National Service Provider Partners, right, that are, they're all building you know, lots of IGEL competency into their organizations. Um, 
And then, of course, the, the other backstop, and I think that's the most real-time backstop, is the Slack community, right? The Agile community. Well, that's my next question, Chad. Uh, I did have ask it because I'd be remiss if I did not, right? And uh, uh, so what is what are your views on the IGEL community? You know, the community is something that uh, I would say people of your level don't always understand. And one of the things I'm, I'm most happy about at IGEL is when I came to IGEL and I said, hey, Jed, I want to build a community, you said, okay. And I was like, well, don't you want me to argue with you a little bit on why? You're like, no, just do it. Right, so, well... Yeah, when I was at AppSense, it was something that, um, you know, quite honestly, running marketing, we sort of fantasized about, like, how could we do, you know, how could we sort of channel the end user compute community, right? And how could we have regular conversations with them and gain insights from them and just, you know, digital, digitally, uh, you know, uh, sponsor something that a platform that would allow some of that to happen, right? And you know, of course, I think, you know, this is part of our journey together, right? Figuring out, okay, is this on LinkedIn? Is this a website? Is this, you know, what, how do you facilitate this in a way that is palatable to people that will draw them in every day to be part of a conversation, right? And, uh, of course, finding Slack uh, uh, was, you know, like striking gold in this process, right? And, I mean, to be honest with you, I think, um you know, I, I, could, I could, could never have imagined the result that uh, we've achieved uh, with your hard work here, right? Um, but it's, it, to me, it's something that every great um, software company, every great company, in fact, whether they're software or otherwise, need to have a community, right? And they need to have this sort, sort of organic conversation happening. Um, I mean, I think it's going to be table stakes, especially if you take into account the things we just talked about where people are working from home and they need to have this digital platform where they can, they can have these conversations, right? Um, this, this is going to replace some of that water cooler, you know, things that happen or even the synergies, you know, the, the trade shows that are going to be fewer and farther between now, right? Um, the, 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 the community, knowing that you have like-minded people, that are facing you know the similar challenges and that you can count on them to uh to, to be there for you this is this is table stakes for any company right and so i i uh no, i'm a i'm a big supporter of what you're doing doug and i i think uh know, yeah, all i ask is that you continue to be bold and take risks and um yeah don't be afraid to to fail because obviously this is a this is a fast moving space, right? Um, and we're all students of it. And you know, if anyone's listening out there and has ideas for Doug on things we should be thinking about or things that you see in other communities that we're not doing, I uh, I just I think this is there's not a, a blueprint written in stone, right? So help us make a better community is all I would ask. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's it's um. <clears throat> the community, uh, I think you said it right, too, is that, uh, you know, I knew we could have a successful community because we have really passionate partners and customers and we have a great solution. But um, what happens inside Slack and the, in the, the involvement and the camaraderie and everything, all the above and more is, is outstanding. It's mind blowing yeah. to me. And I guess yeah. I would hope that it's not just about IGEL too, right? It's like, no, hey, we talk about a lot of things. Such a conversation going on in end user compute right now, you know, and, and helping each other through that, right. As we contemplate this whole concept of desktop as a service and delivering a cloud PC and, the hybrid kind of world that we're going to live in for quite a long time. Right. And, you know, there's just, um, there's a dark art to, to delivering this. And we have a lot of people, albeit, you know, uh, that may feel, um, it's, it's, it's a small community, right. That, that really has spent two decades working on this and we got to be there to support each other. We may compete with each other. We may not agree with each other all the time, but, I think if we can find places like the IGEL community to have some of these rigorous conversations, um, you know, this is very important, right? And, and uh, so I, I think it's gotta be more than, for me, it's more than, it, while it has the IGEL name on it, it's really about an end user compute community. It's just like Disrupt, right? It might say IGEL Disrupt, but um, this is a, you know, a user group event for the whole community of end user compute, you know, and there's, 
30 plus sponsors there. And, you know, yeah, IGEL has some time on the main stage and IGEL has some breakouts and, um, you know, it's got IGEL's name on it, but, you know, this is a um, industry of that. And I, I see it the same way with the community. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. That's, uh, we, we do it. The second most popular channel we have is our chit chat, chit chat channel. We talk about absolutely anything. And that's, uh, that amazes me because it's sort of the sense of community, right? That we're all together and we're, we're sharing information. And, and you see it in every channel too. It's, it's really fabulous. I only have a couple more minutes. Actually, I think I have one more minute of your time. So I have one last question. That is, you know, we talked about the future of the world, right? COVID-19 definitely threw us a curveball and then some, right? But what do you see the future of IGEL being? Well, I mean, first and foremost, um, I think it's going to be a great place to work and a great place to uh, partner as it has been, right? Like the sort of values of the company and the, the rigor of the, of the product. Um, yeah, I think that's foremost and kind of how we think about sort of people product. But we have a plan and we have an audacious plan, right? I mean, we believe that um, we're going to grow well outside the boundaries of sort of the th- classic thin client um, you know, market that a lot of people put us in. Um, which is about 5 million units a year that are sold as a thin client. Um, in fact, you're going to see IGEL move into the number one position in 2020. It's very clear that we're on a trajectory to do that. And uh, what does that mean? It means we're going to sell about 1.2 million seats. And of course, when I say seats, we're selling software, right? Whether it's on our hardware or someone else's, it's irrelevant to us, right? And then in the next three years, you're going to see IGEL surpass both leaders hp and dell combined in terms of the number of seats that we sell and of course we're 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 offering a totally different value proposition uh as we sell this right from a sort of thin quiet piece of hardware to a you know a, a radically different um software platform if you will right that's extraordinarily innovative and unlocks a lot of value f- for people that are trying to to de- deploy this cloud workspace right and i think you know, in the next five years, you can look for us to surpass the entire market, right? And if you look at operating systems as a, as a sort of placeholder uh, for, for, you know, a proxy, right, in servers or phones, you typically have one or two uh, kind of key, you know, technology mar- market leaders, and they own an unfair share of market, market share, right? And so I think that's where we're, we're headed is, you know, 10, 10 million licenses a year, 15 million licenses a year. And, you know, that's a billion dollar company. And of course, that's going to be a very fun, you know, uh, ride that we're going to go on uh, to, to grow the company to that size. So, yeah, that's kind of how we see things. We, we, we think big. You yeah, know, we've closed some of the largest hospitals, retailers, uh, banking and finance and insurance companies in the world. And so we have a lot of like uh, conviction that IGEL has a place on the desktop and on the device um, you know, as we make this sort of once in 35 year pivot away from locally installed applications and a big unwieldy, you know, um, a local operating system to, to, a, to a light, secure, highly manageable operating system connecting to the, to a cloud delivered, um, architecture. And so, you know, it may be a little bit, uh, audacious and over ambitious to some of your listeners, but we believe IGEL um, has a place in that future in a very big way. I, I, I a hundred percent agree with you. Um, a hundred percent agree with you. You know, uh, you, you guys might've seen uh, Jed's believe t-shirts and at I Joe, we believe in so many different things. And I always joke back with Jed is I don't believe anymore. I know. And uh, I know that we'll achieve these goals. It's, it's, I'm way past having to believe. I just know it's going to happen. And the other thing yeah, I'll say well, to you. I mean, I, I sum up how we run this company on three words. The first one is believe. And this is something that I think a lot of people are actually, you know, um, getting quite inspired by. And if any listener wants one of our believe t-shirts, go to igel.com slash believe. We'll overnight you one. And uh, you can join our sort of movement of optimism. But really the belief thing is about, hey, you know, if you can believe something, that's the first step, right? You, yep. you can dream it. If you can build it and bring it to market, then, uh, you know, that's really what, 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 it, what we're driving towards. And then the, the other two words are servant heart, right? Like our whole ethos inside of IGEL is we are here to serve our, our own uh team of people and that's something very special here right how we look out after each other inside this company 
And if we do that well, we take care of our partners well, and of course, uh, our customers. And so, um, yeah, that's the the sort of ethos of, of Igel right now is believe and serve at heart. I love it. I love it. And in, in, in serving hard and like you mentioned the people and, and you said it's a great place to work. I, I was one of those guys that you mentioned that were, you know, been doing this for 20 plus years in the, in this EUC, uh, uh, Citrix VMware Microsoft world. Right. And uh, I've never had a better time than I've had in the past three years. Uh, it's just been an absolutely amazing experience for me. So thank you so much, Jed, for bringing me on. And then along with this ride, and and uh, I can't wait to uh, bring you back on the show. I know we're over time now, so I better let you go. But I'll give you the last word and say again, thank you so much for all you do for not just IGEL, but for the for the world, right? You know, like you said, it's about the serving heart and and giving and what have you. So yeah, well, thanks. I uh, thanks all, all of you for suffering through the last uh, thirty minutes with Doug and I. Uh, we we love you out there. Stay positive through uh, all of this and. Uh, Hope to see you sometime uh, face-to-face somewhere in this world as uh, things um, y- y- uh, change for the better. So uh, keep positive and keep optimistic, and uh, we'll work through this together. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chad. Okay, that concludes another successful episode of DABCC Radio. Thank you, Jed, so much for taking the time to do this. This man is as busy as can be. I've never met anyone that does more all day long. He wakes up very early and goes to bed, I think, very late. Um, He always responds quite quickly, so... I don't know, maybe he has a jet signal in the air or something, but what a great guy, great guy, great leader, and somebody like, like I said, somebody you want to do things for, you know, someone you want to work hard for. So thank you, Jed, so much for taking the time to, to be with us and share the insights you have. On that note, thanks to each and every one of you guys for listening to DABCC Radio. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, believe it or not, I have, I think, four more podcasts in the in the hopper. I have more scheduled. So we are back. We're going to be doing a lot of these things. So stay tuned. It's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm happy about doing it. I took, as you guys know, I took some time off. And that was quite nice because we sort of recharged the batteries. And um, my batteries are fully charged. I got the new Apple um, battery monitor on it, I guess. That's sort of lame. But <laughs> anyway... And, uh, yeah, what do I say? But thanks you all for listening. If you like this show, please tell a friend. Uh, if you don't, tell me why. And if you have any suggestions or if you want to be on the show, please email me at brown at igel.com or dbrown at dabcc.com. And I will respond. We'll get you on. And, and a huge shout out to all those folks that, uh, that I call friends, which is each and every one of you. So on that note, thank you all for listening to DABCC Radio. D-A-B-C. Say it again, D-A-B-C-C. D-A-B-C. Can you say it again, D-A-B-C-C. D-A-B-B-C. How about D-A-B-C-C. D-A-B-B-C. D-A-B-C-C. 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 D-A-B-C-C.